Hello and welcome to this video presentation for CallumMcMillan.com I'm Callum McMillan and today I'll be taking you through the setting up of your electronics lab. In the last video I introduced the project. If you haven't seen it yet then I recommend you take a look before you watch this. In brief though, we're going to look at some basic electronics then we'll build up on that knowledge and use it to create our own home automation system. In this video though, here's what we're going to cover. First we'll look at what equipment you'll need to get, then we'll look at how you go about setting it up. Finally, I'll go through some of the components you'll need to get. A list of all the tools and components I discuss are listed both on the CallumCommon.com website and in the description for this video on YouTube. So choosing your equipment. If money and space weren't an issue for me, then I'd be recommending stocking up on a whole range of professional equipment that would allow me to make high quality circuit boards in large quantities. Since that's not possible for me, or for most people, you'll need to choose your tools, equipment and components carefully. What you choose will be based on how much you have to spend and what you aim to do with it. I have broken down the process of building circuits into four stages. We're going to focus on the first two and may possibly look at the third. It would help if I explain what the four stages are though. The first stage is building a circuit on breadboard. This is useful since it's a reusable method, so components can be easily swapped in and out and later reused and circuits can be easily adjusted. Breadboard itself is a plastic frame containing metal tie points where wires and components can be connected. Once you're happy with your circuit board on breadboard, then you move to the second stage which is prototyping it on strip board. This is a permanent circuit with the components being soldered to the board. This means if there's a mistake or a problem, it's much harder to put right. Strip board itself is a sheet of circuit board material pre-drilled in a grid pattern with copper strips connecting each row of the board. Some circuits though are too complex to build easily on strip board, so the next stage is to make a proper printed circuit board by hand. This is however quite time consuming and if you have the need to make more than one or two boards then you move on to robotically manufactured PCBs. Right, choosing a workspace. There's five key considerations when you choose where you're going to work. The first is space. You want at least three feet or a meter of desk space to be able to lay out your tools, equipment and components. The more space you have, the better. Also, the space needs to be nice and clear to allow you to work freely. You'll need good, bright, direct lighting so you can really see what you're doing and three the electrical sockets You'll want one for your power supply, one for your soldering iron, and later on one for powering your circuits when they need mains voltage. Ventilation is important when it comes to soldering. The best way of getting fresh air in is an opening window. Finally, access to a computer is always helpful. It will allow you to access a lot more information when building circuits, and you'll need it later on to control the home automation systems we build. So this is where I do all my work. As you can see I have the five key things all sorted. So what I'm going to do now is set it up for the first stage of prototyping. What do I need to do for that? First you'll need to get a decent adjustable voltage power supply. I was fortunate enough to find a trip while put one for £50. This gives me a variable output of 0 to 30 volts and 0 to 2.5 amps. It also has fixed 500 milliamp 5 and 12 volt outputs. You'll need some breadboard. It may also be referred to as prototyping board. And the bigger you can get it, the better in terms of how easily you'll be able to simulate your circuits. You'll need some hand tools. Primarily, you need wire cutters and strippers, some pliers and a set of screwdrivers. You also want a set of test leads for connecting your circuit to external components and a multimeter for testing your circuits. And this is my workspace setup how I like it. On the left is my power supply and multimeter with the connection leads attached. 
Centre front is the breadboard, which is fixed to a mounting plate with a pair of tie points for the fixed 5 and 12 volt supplies. Centre rear is my test leads. I have a little trick which is to wrap them around a piece of cardboard to keep them neat and tidy. Next to the leads is my screwdrivers. These are insulated and rated up to a thousand volts. This means that if I accidentally come into contact with a hot main circuit, I'm less likely to electrocute myself. On the right is the remainder of my hand tools. I've also put a little knife in there which is handy for stripping the insulation from thicker cables. Right, to move to the second stage of prototyping, you will need everything just seen in the first stage, plus the strip board you'll be copying your circuit onto, and the equipment for soldering it. And this is what it looks like when it's all set up. It's also why I said you'll need to have plenty of space to work in. What we have here is a big sheet of cardboard to protect the desk from damage. On top of that, we have a couple of heat resistant mats for doing the actual soldering on. On the right, we have an Antex soldering iron in a stand with the cleaning sponge. In the centre, we have a helping hand which allows you to clamp your work in position while you solder it. We have the strip board we're going to use to make our circuit on next to the stand. And then to the left of that, we have a track cutter and a desoldering pump commonly referred to as a solder sucker and it's used to clean up unwanted solder when you're removing a joint. Finally we have our solder which is a traditional 6040 lead tin solder with a multi-core flux inside and a reel of desoldering braid which is a loose knit multi-strand copper wire which draws solder away from the joint. In the workspace I showed You'll notice I was quite careful where each piece was positioned. Because I'm right handed, the workspace is set up as such. This involves three key points. The soldering iron sits to the right, out the way of everything else, with the cable running between the iron and the workpiece so that it doesn't have to move as you move the iron around. The power supply is situated on the left. This means you don't have to reach across anything when you want to adjust it. And finally, the cables will enter the circuit from the left hand side, meaning as you solder, you are less likely to accidentally damage any attached cables. Now that we're taking care of the workspace and equipment, let's talk about components. Again, this is an area where it would be really easy to go out and spend a small fortune on them. What I feature here, and list as an accompaniment to the video, is not an exhaustive list of what's needed in this series, but it's enough to get started without spending a lot of money. We will start with input components. You'll need a variety of switches, push on and push off, plus some slide switches. You also want some sensors such as thermistors and light dependent photo resistors. Next you'll want your passive and control components. You'll want some fixed and variable resistors, some capacitors, both ceramic and electrolytic, some transistors and diodes, and some smart components such as microcontrollers, logic gates, and IC chips. Finally, for the outputs, you want items such as LEDs in a variety of colours, buzzers, and relays. Additionally, you'll want things such as wire and a small number of specialist components for when we get onto the home automation section. If any of this isn't clear at the moment, or you don't understand what these components are, then don't worry as I will explain a bit more about each component as I use it. So what we have here is a selection of the components from the sequence I just described, from left to right. And remember you can read more about these components in the description accompanying this video. Right, that's about it for today. In the next video, we'll look at the fundamentals of electronics and get on to making some simple circuits. For now though, thank you for watching.